Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tip of the Week. Um, this is Lily here taking you through some more of these new things that are coming in Harmony 11. Um, so this time I wanted to go over painting in bitmap or coloring in, doing ink and paint. Uh, last time we just went over doing drawings, which is basically using your your brush tool, setting up some brushes, and, and using your cutter tool when you need to, to cut things and make adjustments. But when you're painting things in, um, we also do some very, very interesting things. So let's start by just doing a super simple example. I have my four different layers set up here with the different types of art. So I have the vector on both the line and the color. I have the bitmap lines and vector underneath it. I have the vector lines and bitmap underneath it. And then I have the bitmap on both. So I'm in my drawing view now, which just allows me to isolate out a little bit better the individual drawings that I'm working on. And so I'll come in here um, and first of all just do some very simple drawings. I'll do a circle on each layer in the line art layer. So I'm in the line art and so this is a vector example. I'll do a bitmap example. Let's do it with black just to keep it the same. Alright, so I've got my different circles here now on the lines and I'm going to come in and fill them in now onto the color art layer. So when you're working in both vector for the for the line and the color, um, then what we used to do was when you're working with a brush line or with a vec or with a pencil line either, um, you could either paint directly in the line art layer, um, which still people will choose to do, or you could paint into the color art layer if you wanted to have your color underneath. And there's this um, tool here called Create Color Art from Line Art. And so if you use that and then you go down to your color art layer, then basically what you see is this line that is uh, a vector line called a stroke. It's an invisible line and you can use the K shortcut to turn on or turn off that view. And then from in here now I could decide to paint it. So let's just grab you know like a blue color and paint it in. So if I choose to turn on the preview then I'll be able to see both those layers at the same time and that's the result that I have. So when I turn off the preview I've got the lines in one layer, the color in the other, and then this is the final drawing together. So that's how it worked before in Vector. You also could, by the way, when you're working in Vector, do maybe your line in the pencil tool with the pencil tool. And when you do your line with the pencil tool, um, it's a similar deal, uh, except this, the pencil is defined by the center line. So you can either paint directly on the line art layer or you could um, copy your strokes into the color art layer and um, and then paint with those strokes in there. And the only difference being if you ever do see a little gap there, you can turn on your close gap on there or you can um, definitely um, use your stroke tool or your close gap tool to close that gap. So there's a couple of different options there. So that's a vector example. So let's go now to the bitmap example. So this is the first thing that we do slightly different than other people. So what we've done differently than other people is we still have the ability to select a bitmap line and use the same create color art from line art functionality to extract the center line of that line and then come in here and paint it in. And then I can see the result at the top there so I still get the really nice result. Um, and yet since I've painted that color in in vector I have the flexibility of changing the color afterwards if I want to. For those people who want to draw the lines in vector and then color in bitmap you can use either the brush line or the pencil line for this. In this case I've used the uh, the brush line but it really doesn't make that much of a difference. So if I'm coming in here and I've got the lines in vector and I want to do bitmap underneath it Normally the reason that you would choose to do that is when you want to do some really painterly options. So maybe I wanted to come in here and have a sketchy kind of uh, watercolor look underneath this line. And so you can really come in there and do something rough and, and kind of dirty and then have it underneath your nice clean lines. Um, you can also, of course, come in here with your eraser tool and you, we will now have a soft eraser as well, by the way. So uh, you can erase on bitmap with a soft eraser and uh, have some interesting kind of effects on that. 
as well. But when you're painting underneath in bitmap, it's not necessarily because you want to extract the exact center line and get in there and and get it really tight and perfect. Usually that's more for the other options. So you can play around with that there. And then the last way of doing it is to have the line and the color in bitmap. And so when I come in here with my paint bucket on um, a bitmap layer, first of all there's this whole bitmap options section that's different, that's new. And so the bitmap options, first of all you can define where the, you want to find the source. So when you're painting in bitmap the source and the destination have to both be bitmap for this to work. So in other words, if my lines are bitmap, I can tell it, oh, go and look in the line art layer, and then I'm actually on the color art, and I can just paint, and it works. Um, you do also have these other options. So let's actually do that, but let's copy this drawing onto the next frame as well, and then I can um, change it a little bit to show you some differences. So. Um, you can also come in here and adjust some of these properties. So if you ever tried to paint in Photoshop, then all of these values in Photoshop are effectively off. You paint it and you get this little bit of a crunchy, white, nasty, nastiness. And um, so what these basically do is color tolerance, first of all, will come in and it will look for the first pixel that is not clear and it will count that as the edge of where it should stop. And so if I keep the color, color tolerance at zero and yet I pump the max overlap up, you see that it, it kind of stopped there but it went an extra 23 pixels in. And these numbers are pixel based. So if I turn it down to six pixels for example, you'll see it found the edge and it went six pixels in. The alpha value is really what's changing in here. I don't have color tolerance is more for when you have um, mixing colors together like if I have a red boundary and a blue boundary. In this case it's more of an alpha boundary. So I can go all the way up to 255 on the alpha which is like too much but I can go a little bit up as well and then I can play with the overlap. So the default values for these are to have a certain amount of overlap and then when you do it that way the lines just come out you know really nice and crisp and and you also have the appropriate amount of um, color underneath it. So the majority of the time you should not have to play around with these values but just so that you know that they're there these can really help you to do some some bitmap drawing and bitmap painting in a very efficient way. So hopefully that gave you a couple of ideas about how to paint things in. So when you go back to figuring out whether you want to use vector, whether you want to mix bitmap lines with vector fill, uh, vector lines with bitmap fill, and then entirely bitmap, it also comes down to the style of the production that you want to do. Um, so uh, keep that in mind when you're playing around with these and I really look forward to seeing some of the examples of the projects that you guys are going to create.